If I drop a pebble into a pond, a circular ripple will spread outward from the entry point. If I continue dropping pebbles at regular time intervals, a series of concentric rings, all moving outward at the same speed, will be formed. But what happens if I move my hand along as I drop the pebbles? I might then get a series of rings that are no longer concentric, but rather crowded together in the direction my hand is moving. The amount of crowding depends on how fast my hand moves relative to how fast the ripples move. If I move my hand at the same speed as the rings move, all the rings will touch at a point. What happens if I move the source of the ripples faster than the ripples can spread? Watch this bird as it skims along the surface of the water. See the V-shaped bow wave spreading from the bird? This is what happens. It is swimming faster than the speed of the ripples it creates, so the individual waves can never spread in front of it. Instead, this V-shaped wave is formed. The angle of the V depends on just how much faster than the wave speed the bird is moving. This is an example of a shock wave in two dimensions. The object creating the wave is traveling faster than the speed of the wave itself. In this case, the bird is swimming on the surface of the water faster than the speed a wave travels over this surface. Now let's consider a three-dimensional case. A rifle bullet or a jet aircraft travels not on a surface, but through a medium, the atmosphere. Pressure waves that travel in three dimensions through a medium are called sound waves, and the speed with which they travel is called the speed of sound. And, just as with our swimming bird, if the bullet or aircraft is traveling faster than the wave speed, the speed of sound in this case, the wave cannot propagate ahead of the object, but becomes attached and travels along with the object, spreading out in the three-dimensional equivalent of a V, a cone. This is the sonic boom associated with supersonic aircraft, or the familiar crack of a rifle bullet. Just as a bullet or an airplane creates a pressure disturbance when traveling through the air, an electrically charged particle traveling through any medium creates an electromagnetic disturbance. And as a pressure or sound wave is created in the former case, an electromagnetic or light wave is created in the latter. If a charged particle is traveling faster than the speed of light in that medium, a cone-shaped shock wave will travel along with the particle. But now, this is a cone of light, not a pressure wave. Light produced in this way is called Cherenkov light, in honor of the Russian physicist Pavel Cherenkov, who first explained it. Cherenkov light plays a large role in the search for neutrino oscillations. In the water detectors of Kamiokande and Super Kamiokande, and the oil detectors of LSND and Boone, high energy particles produced in neutrino interactions are traveling faster than the speed of light in the water or oil, and thus produce Cherenkov light. The arrays of photomultiplier tubes lining the detectors are sensitive to this light. As the cone of light spreads out from its point of origin and reaches the detector wall, it forms a ring-shaped image. The size, location, and orientation of this ring allows physicists to determine the location and nature of the interaction that produced it.